What is up guys, Mr. Who's the Boss here, and welcome to my full review of the Blue Boo X550 smartphone. So taking a look through the specifications, this is actually a really normal device, except for one thing, a 5350 milliamp hour battery. More on that later. The Blue X550 is a pretty normal phone when it comes to appearance. It doesn't stand out from the crowd, it doesn't exactly look ugly, but really does nothing to differentiate itself, it just looks like a white slab. Considering its huge battery, this thing is on the thick side. It's just under 10mm, and so it feels like a phone of yesteryear, albeit quite a nice one. We also have an 8 megapixel camera on the back with a CMOS sensor and a single LED flash, and this is an f2.0 lens, which is pretty good. And then we have a rather measly 2 megapixel front camera with a wide angle lens. The whole of the back and the sides of the device are made of a matte white plastic, which is cheap and cheerful. It's got a matte finish to it, and this includes what's on the button, so it doesn't really slip too much, but then again it doesn't exactly feel as high quality as a lot of the metal phones we've been seeing recently. What we do have on the back here is a slight curve, which means the device does palm quite nicely, and although it is a little bit heavier than most devices, it doesn't exactly feel uncomfortable due to this. Most people will appreciate that the back cover is also removable, and so you can also add a SD card up to 32GB and remove the giant 5300mAh battery. So compared to my current phone, the Vivo X Sharp, which is about of average thickness, the Blue Boo is about 25% thicker, which is noticeable, but not exactly game-changing. It feels like a normal phone with a case on it, for example. Overall, the X550 is built with the same quality as an average Chinese smartphone, with a nice finish and a bit more heft to it. On the other hand, the features is where this phone really stands out. Running on Android 5.1, this is the most up-to-date experience you can get on any Android device, and this is a vanilla experience. The screen, although only a 720p resolution, is actually really pleasant to look at with incredible viewing angles, great colours and rich contrast. It's a very, very nice display, all things considered. The maximum brightness on offer here is just over 400 nits, which puts this in the top 10% of Android devices. The only real downside to the display, like I said, is the resolution, which is 720p, and when stretched over 5.5 inches, it's obviously not going to be a retinal quality, but for most users at a reasonable distance, it's not an issue at all. With its modest $150 price tag, the X550 actually pleasantly surprises with its camera. Being only 8 megapixels on paper, it's actually supposed to be quite weak, but I found it to be a good camera. Not only is the contrast and detail rather high, but it's actually using a CMOS sensor here with an f2.0 aperture lens. This means you get a pretty good amount of light through, sometimes even a little bit too much, but you also get strong depth of field effects, which is nice to see and makes your photos look more professional. The outdoor and landscape shots though are much less enjoyable. They look a little bit washed out and detail doesn't come through as well. It's in these photos that you can really see the limitations of the 8 megapixel sensor. The LED flashlight, although only one bulb, is actually rather bright, but the fact that it's not a dual tone flash does mean that you get this slightly unnatural colour when you're actually using it. So now let's take a little listen to the speaker. While the volume here is average, the actual sound quality is a little above, with decent bass and a good amount of richness. So after sticking on the latest version of Android, Android 5.1, Blueboo has basically left this phone alone. It's added little of its own in terms of features which, give or take, can be a good or a bad thing. I mean, some companies overload their devices and make them run much slower, other companies actually add useful additions. This phone just basically is Android. The only one addition here is Smart Wake, which is basically different ways to wake your device. You can either double tap the screen to go straight to the unlock menu, or you can actually draw things on it to go straight to apps, which is actually a really, really quick way of doing things. We also have the Play Store pre-installed with all Google Play services working fine, a feature which should not be underestimated. And last but not least, the battery. It is absolutely outstanding. For light to medium users, you can squeeze four days out of this thing four whole days, and that's without even going into the battery saver menu. 5350 milliamps with an efficient CPU is just a dream come true for battery lovers. Overall, the features of this device really are quite impressive. Under the hood, we have 2GB of RAM and the MT6735 processor, MediaTek's lowest end offering for 2015. But don't be put off by that though, 
Unless you're actually into heavy gaming, this is basically a great chip to use. Not only is it extremely power efficient, but it actually runs all the UI and the menus extremely quickly, flicking through menus, going through your music, doing all your sort of internet browsing is all really, really snappy. However, when it comes to benchmarking, you're obviously going to see this processor fall behind. Compared to its octa-core sibling, gaming is nowhere near as good an experience. You can see here, playing Real Racing 3, that although the game does look nice, there is some quite significant aliasing, as it's only 720p display, and also, it's just not running at a playable frame rate. This is running at about 20 frames per second, whereas 25 is considered the sort of lower limit for a enjoyable experience. You can forget playing games like Modern Combat 5 and Nova 3, or anything with intense 3D graphics at a smooth frame rate, but then again, most Android games and apps are basically 2D and 2.5D, and these seem to run fine on this new chip. So if you think of the MT6735 not as just a weak processor, but more as something which is designed for power efficiency, then I suppose you can start to forgive its actual performance flaws. So the Blueboo X550 is definitely a special phone. Its giant, giant battery is the largest I've ever seen on an Android device, and the fact that it makes it a little bit bulky can easily be forgiven if you're seeking a larger battery. With most of the best phones today going for about 1.5 to 2 days on a full charge, something which goes for 4 really is a breath of fresh air. What makes this even better is that it actually has fast charge technology, which means even though the battery is huge, it can fully charge itself in just over an hour and a half. The standby battery life is over 30 days. But as great as the battery is, its build shortcomings should not be overlooked. The Bluebeam X550 basically just feels like a bulky slab of plastic. It's not got a metal ring running around it, it's not, you know, looking flashy in any way, it just feels very normal, generic, and quite heavy. And although this is far from the fastest device on the market, for everyone but the hardcore gamer, it should actually offer very serviceable performance, with very little lag or stutter in anywhere but the games and benchmarks. Overall, I have to say it's pretty good. Thanks for watching, guys.